Looney Tunes back in action. It's honestly been quite a long time since I've seen this one. But what I do remember more than anything from this is that this has one of the craziest production histories for an animated film, or partially animated in this case. It originally began as a sequel to Space Jam right after the first was a big hit. But since Michael Jordan didn't want to do a second round and the producers had to hide that fact from the animators so that they had to keep on working, the plans for a Space Jam 2 was inevitably scrapped. For now. After trying and failing to develop several different jams, it wouldn't be until director Joe Dante came into the scene with a passion for the Looney Tunes to develop a movie that would honor their legacy. A perfect choice to create this film with no trouble, right? Well, actually, no. It ended up becoming this year and a half battle between Dante, who wanted to make a tribute to the classic cartoons, and the Warner Brothers executives who just wanted another Space Jam. Ultimately, it ended up with everyone losing, as the film became a box office bomb and caused the popularity of the Looney Tunes to tank for the rest of the 2000s. But when it comes to Back in Action, is the movie itself to blame for its own downfall? Was Back in Action truly a dark time for the Looney Tunes, or is it a hidden gem that helped preserve the spirit of the Looney Tunes for the modern age? Let's find out! The Story In the Looney Tunes cartoons, they focus less on telling an actual story in favor of supplying as many gags as they can in 7-8 to eight minutes. This structure works for the cartoons because that's their main goal, to make people laugh with the craziest of scenarios in a short amount of time. In a 90 minute feature film, however, that format doesn't really work, since story does take a lot more of an importance in a movie. It's pretty obvious that it doesn't really care about telling a story and instead would rather be a literal feature length cartoon with as many Looney Tunes characters as possible. And because it wants to do so many things at once, the plot becomes very messy with little linear structure to keep things in order. Sure, it's exciting to see the characters jump from Las Vegas to a desert to Paris to an African jungle and many more, but there's not much of a point for them to be all around the globe other than to put Bugs and Daffy in different areas for more gag opportunities. Well, in that case, since I've been mentioning and criticizing this plot so much, what is this movie even about in the first place? At the most, it's about this aspiring stuntman named DJ and a Warner Brothers executive who are with Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and are all off on a quest to find a diamond named the Blue Monkey in order to save DJ's dad who is a spy. Basically, it's the typical treasure hunt narrative that's meant to give an excuse to why the characters have to jump into a wide variety of environments. So just how are we supposed to get to Paris? Like this. <laughs> Now I know so far I've been pretty harsh on this story, since it is barely delivering anything as a movie. But what about the elements that it does focus on? What about the gags and the feeling of being a Looney Tunes cartoon? Honestly, it's surprisingly effective. Somewhat. An admirably positive note to give this is that it does have a strong love for the classic cartoons, and major Looney Tunes fans will have a lot of fun with pointing out the numerous of references found in every corner. With that love, it does have an understanding of what made the cartoons so lovable and does incorporate that onto the movie. Like the cartoons, the film supplies a large amount of gags, but in here, they are one big mixed bag. On one hand, whenever the film does a joke that would commonly be found in the old cartoons like slapstick, Bugs' witty remarks, and anything with explosions, it's actually really funny and helped make the film more enjoyable. However, when it does a gag that's outside of the usual Looney Tunes formula like pop culture references and gross out humor... Well, who's laughing now? Well, apparently no one. While it may not know how to handle a story well, or barely even contain much of a story, at least its heart for the Looney Tunes is in the right place. The Animation While director Joe Dante was battling it out with Warner Brothers for the right to let the Looney Tunes be themselves, he wasn't the only one trying to stay true to the character's legacy. For the position of animation director, Warner Brothers brought on board legendary Disney animator and Looney Tunes lover Eric Goldberg, where he and his team did a beautiful job with the visuals. The strongest element of this movie is easily the animation, 
where it brings to life the Looney Tunes characters with a great and smooth feature quality while staying true to who they are. The designs remain the same to their classic style while giving them extra lighting for a more three-dimensional look, but the standout star of the visuals is the character animation, allowing the characters to be a lot looser, more expressive, and really play around with the cartoon physics for the sake of comedy. A lot of the jokes rely on it to be physical, and the animation really helps out to make them actually funny. While it is very rare for a scene to be fully animated, since it wants to showcase a lot of the creative sets, what could be noted to possibly be the biggest highlight of the film is the chase scene in the Gallery of the Louvre where Bugs, Daffy, and Elmer Fudd parody many classic works of art. As it is a little more action-packed, the animation also helps out to make the action scenes more exciting and make the moment more creative, where they don't have to always be serious, even in a life-or-death situation. But then there is the way that it blends with its live-action environment. I won't say that the cartoon characters look out of place in the real world, the mix does look good, but can be subpar compared to other notable works. It's most notable when the camera can be shaking a bit and the tunes have a hard time to move with it. Again, it's well done, but it doesn't have that same refinement of believability like Who Framed Roger Rabbit or even Space Jam. That, and there are some moments where CGI was involved, especially at the end, but it's that early 2000s computer animation that hasn't aged well. Thankfully, that only appears on a few occasions, and with the hand-drawn animation on the Looney Tunes, they really do bring the cartoons we all know and love to life. The Characters As the film promised, it brought back many, if not all, of everyone's favorite characters from the Looney Tunes lineup to brighten the feature, rather it be for a prominent role, a highlight of the scene, or even just a cameo. At the same time, there are also a lot of live-action characters meant for the almost non-existent story that are not so great. Starting off with the tunes, the biggest stars of the feature are Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, who are surprisingly the best written characters. I don't necessarily mean as the most likable or the funniest, but more that they are actually well-developed. Bugs is the big superstar beloved by everyone with his smart aleck attitude, but is not perfect and knows his limits for the sake of doing what's right. Meanwhile, Daffy is tired of being the butt of Bugs' jokes and can let loose with his kooky personality while also being selfish and greedy. While he is certainly despicable, the movie also highlights why he is very important to the Looney Tunes family and that he is a key player in the cartoon's legendary comedy. All right, so there are some areas of the script I think we need to address. There's no heart, no cooperation, nobody learns anything. Daffy learns not to stick his head in a jet engine. He's gone. Nah, Daffy always comes back. I just tell him how much I need him. As for the others, outside of the cameos, many of them stay true to their roles in the shorts by being the henchmen to the villain, like Yosemite Sam, Wally Coyote, and Marvin the Martian, or they help expand the world building, like Granny, Sylvester, and Tweety, and Foghorn Leghorn. And then there are the human characters, who are all one note due to the little amount of actual story here. DJ is the hero that aspires to be like his dad, but now has to put that to the test by saving him, Kate Hewton is DJ's love interest, Mr. Chairman is the cartoony villain, and some of the others are only meant to either help DJ or Chairman, like Dusty Tails and Mr. Smith. If I may take a moment to discuss about the acting, while the voices of the cartoons have done a great job, the real actors are kind of... meh. I guess they're trying to emulate the cartoons, but they don't work as well as the actual cartoons themselves. Steve Martin can have his enjoyable moments, but it is possible that he could be overdoing his performance. But if there is one live actor that actually played his part very well, it has to be Brendan Fraser. Not only did he deliver the right balance of seriousness and goofiness to the role of DJ, but there is that sense that he was having a lot of fun in the role, which that feeling passes on to the audience so that they can have fun with the film as well. Like the jokes, the characters are a massive mixed bag. There are ones not from the cartoons that are stale and a little unpleasant, 
while the ones that are, along with Brendan Fraser, have returned exactly like how many generations adored them. They were definitely back, but there wasn't much action that came with it. Looney Tunes back in action brought back the beloved characters in an enjoyably hilarious way, but packaged in a mediocre movie. The film is heavily set back by the weak story, uninspiring acting, and failed to add onto the cartoon's formula to have it be feature length, but it is one of those movies where if it does something good, it does it exceptionally well with Brendan Fraser's performance, the great hand-drawn animation, and the classic style of cartoon comedy that can give out a good laugh. As a movie itself, I recommend to see it at least once to see if it does work for you or not. But if you are a Looney Tunes fan, then this is worth checking out to have a good amount of your Looney Tunes fix. With the way it bombed, it was no help in keeping the legacy of the Looney Tunes alive. But with the movie itself, at least it did try. This is Animan, and just like I said in my review, when it comes to Looney Tunes back in action, this is one of those films that, when it's good, it can be great. I know there are times when watching this, I've had a blast, where it really does feel like watching one of the classic Looney Tunes cartoons, and whenever it has some good jokes, they are really well crafted. But it's just too bad, there's also a lot of elements that are just really mediocre, and the movie itself ends up resulting into something that's just meh, or at worst, it's like a mixed bag, where even though you do get some good stuff, you gotta go through a lot of different things that are just mediocre, or at the worst, they could be unpleasant. But what is actually very interesting to note about Looney Tunes Back in Action is that even though this is kind of made out of the love and passion for the Looney Tunes because Joe Dante has always been a huge fan of those classic cartoons, in a way, Looney Tunes Back in Action was also made out of hatred. I know it may sound weird, but the thing is, is that what I didn't mention in my review is that Joe Dante absolutely despises Space Jam. He thought it was a complete insult to the Looney Tunes. He knows that one of his good friends, who coincidentally is also one of the legendary Looney Tunes directors, Chuck Jones, he didn't like it. So he really wanted to pursue making Looney Tunes back in action, uh, in his words, by the way, to have it be the anti-Space Jam, to be everything that Space Jam is not. And that does really explain as well why there were so many major conflicts throughout the making of the movie because Joe Dante really wanted to avoid making a Space Jam movie while the Warner Brothers executives at the time, they only wanted a Space Jam movie. That was like the main priority for them is to try to make lightning strike twice with another Space Jam. They knew that Space Jam was the most successful thing with the Looney Tunes they have done in many years, and they want to try to recreate that. So, you could definitely tell that in the movie, you could see where there were some major clashes between what Joe Dante wanted to do with the classic cartoons, and what uh, the Warner Brothers executives wanted to do with some of the more modern elements to be a little bit more like Space Jam. And it's a bit complicated, but... At the end of the day, with the mixed results, with the mixed things that they want to incorporate, it ultimately does result in a mixed bag. But anyways, now that we are done with the Looney Tunes, now that we are done with Back in Action, it is now time that we are going to go and move on to a Patreon request. And this time it's going to be from Jezman94. So... Before I get into uh, what the next one will be, I would just like to say that if you like to be like the Jazz Man and you want to go and support my work and get some amazing rewards at the same time, including but not limited to watching my videos before anyone else, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But 
at the same time if you guys would like to support my work and you or, or no no that's not it sorry wrong one if you guys would like to submit an animated film and you would like me to go and put it onto the animation hat then all you have to do is go to uh just write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com i know that was a little bit messy to get into but at least now you got the point so with that said and done uh, what is it that the Jez man went and requested me to go and review? Which movie does he want me to go and check out? Well, unlike Looney Tunes Back in Action, uh, he wants me to go and watch something that's a little bit more refined. Something maybe to take a little bit more seriously. Something that has a little bit more grace and elegance. Like a swan. Let me, 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 let me,